A lot of growers just use tap water to water their plants. And for a lot of people, that isn't really a problem. But you really need to know what's in your water and you need to know the effect that these certain things can have on your plants. So in this video, I'm gonna run over the things that you need to look for in your tap water, things that you need to add if you are using filtered water and things you might have toxicities of or problems that could happen with your tap water. So one thing I've noticed is the closer you get to more urban, more densely populated places, uh, the more toxins you're gonna find in your water, the more chlorine, the more fluoride, and both of those things can be really detrimental for your plant. So we need to know uh, what exactly is in our water, and what you can do is just hop on Google and type in where you live and ask for a water report. And usually you can find that, that's public information that Google can usually find pretty quickly right then and there you'll you'll know what's in your tap water now that doesn't really help you if you don't exactly know what you're looking for so i'm going to go over the big ones that you really need to pay attention to that could really hurt your plant so the chemicals that we want none of that we want to really keep away from our plants are chlorine the chloramine and fluoride and those can be found in drinking water and tap water in America, all over the place. So if you have chlorine, chloramine, or fluoride, then right off the bat already, you're gonna be hurting your plant. All three of those can build up within the plant structure itself, uh, causing issues with nutrient uptake. Luckily, we can actually filter out all three of these using one of these. This is a tabletop reverse osmosis filter. And if you're the kind of person who wants to go full DIY, you can install a reverse osmosis filter into your actual plumbing and that's an even better solution but this is a nice simple solution just kind of for topping off your plant so the other things we really want to look for in our drinking water and uh, just keep an eye on are going to be the calcium and magnesium now this is what makes your water hard or soft and why this can be a bad thing is because calcium toxicity can happen really easily if you haven't seen this video make sure you check that one out but Calcium toxicity and then locks out nitrogen and that creates a whole set of problems, especially during the vegetative stage. So understanding how much calcium is already in your water when you put it into your garden is paramount, especially when people are adding calcium magnesium blindly without realizing that they already have a ton of calcium and or magnesium in their tap water. And by adding the calcium magnesium, all they're doing is offsetting a calcium toxicity then in their garden. Once again though, that tabletop reverse osmosis filter would take out all the calcium magnesium. That would turn the hard water into soft water. We're taking water that has a high TDS, an EC, uh, high parts per million, and we're taking that down to water that hardly has any parts per million. I think it's really important to start from a zero EC so that we know what we're actually giving our plants. The last thing we really need to pay close attention to in our tap water is the pH. A lot of people, especially beginners, do not not consider the pH of the tap water that they're putting in their garden. You can get a digital meter now for pretty inexpensive. I'll link some of the description box for you. And these digital meters make it way easier just to go in and check your pH. And then all you have to do is use pH up or down to get the pH to where it should be. Now for soil, most cannabis plants, you're gonna want right around 7.0. For hydroponics, you're gonna want right around 6.0. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is more rare to find water out of the tap that's gonna be set just right to 7.0. If you're in a hydroponic garden, you can almost guarantee you're going to have to use pH down to take it to the 6.0. As I go on with this channel, you're gonna realize my content's gonna lean more and more towards hydroponics. I've been a hydroponic gardener for since 2014, so over a decade now, and it's the way that I prefer to grow. I actually really believe hydroponics is the best for beginners. Uh, so if you are a beginner and you're, and you're just starting off, hydroponics actually might be an easier route for you to wrap your mind around. Soil, there's so many unpredictabilities. You don't get to see exactly what's going on. If you're the kind of person that can read a chart and follow instructions um, then hydroponics might be for you but also um, with growing with hydro and your tap water you definitely want to make sure that you know what's in there you want it to be set to that pH of 6.0 always and you have your EC set correctly with your meter as well okay so let's do a quick recap first you need to look up and see what's in your local tap water and if it contains chlorine chloramine or fluoride you should really go ahead and just strip that and do a reverse osmosis filter and get rid of that. Because putting that into your garden at all, at any level, is going to be detrimental for your plant. It's just not good for your plant. So why would we want to put that in our garden? So chlorine, chloramine, and fluoride, we want to strip that out of our water with a reverse osmosis filter. 
It's good to know how much calcium magnesium is already in your water, particularly calcium, because the calcium toxicity uh, could offset the ability for your plant to create nitrogen, which is the producer for chlorophyll. So then your plant would stop photosynthesizing. So adding more calcium without knowing what's already in your tap water can be really detrimental for your plant. You'll see your tips burn pretty quickly. And the last thing is making sure we set our pH just with pH up or down and checking it. You can use a digital meter that's way better than using this analog stuff. You'll burn through it. And just make sure our pH is set in our water because the pH actually unlocks the nutrients. If the pH is not set correctly, then your plant can't use the nutrients that uh, it's trying to take in through osmosis and transpiration. It can't use those at all if the pH is not set properly. Uh, even if they're right there, there could be an abundance of nitrogen and sulfur and calcium and magnesium and boron and everything they need. But if the, if the pH is not set properly for boron uptake, then it the plant won't take any, and then it will start to show deficiencies of boron, and you'll, and you'll start to see these problems, and you'll have no idea why, but really it's just because your pH was off and your plant couldn't take those nutrients in. I think that's the number one thing that happens with beginners is they assume that something's off with their nutrients, so they pour more nutrients in trying to fix it, then the EC goes way, way overboard, and then they end up with osmotic stress, which is when the EC is too high in their water and their plant starts sending the the nutrients back into the water. So, so not having your pH set correctly can create a whole circus of problems. And I would say with hydroponics, that is the number one problem that I see that beginners have. And in soil, I feel it's the most overlooked thing that could create such a drastic difference if it was optimized properly. If you're the kind of person that gets more out of hands-on, step-by-step courses, then you're gonna to wanna to check out my two courses. I have Step Into Hydro, which is a mini course that teaches you everything that you're gonna to need to know to get started with hydroponic indoor cannabis cultivation. And then I have my flagship course, The One Pound Plant. This is a complete education that's gonna teach you everything that you would need to know to go from seed to harvest to pull a complete one pound plant with an indoor growth environment. This course contains 40 lessons and each lesson comes with its own video, a guide, checklists, and action steps to keep you growing. So if either of those sound like a direction you wanna head in and you wanna start having big, dense harvests, then make sure you check out the links in the description box below. And until the next video, let's grow together.